Hello and welcome to our fourth Navigate Rebar Discovery session where we'll be taking a look at our new Foundation reinforcement features. This is our first iteration of Foundations and we have concentrated on rectangular and square elements just as a starting point. Of course, as the product continues to develop, we will add additional functionality for other geometry and reinforcement configurations. Let's begin by placing some simple reinforcement into this pad foundation here. So we'll select the isolated foundation and you'll notice on the context ribbon we can go ahead here and select our foundation reinforcement tool. In the foundation reinforcement dialog you'll notice here that it's split into two areas. We have our top bars and our bottom bars. Each of the panels has some additional functionality where we can actually have the longitudinal and transversal bars actually set to the same setting or we can actually set these independently. Additionally, the reinforcement can be in one single piece or we can actually choose to have a lap here, perhaps with configurations such as two L bars or two U bars that are lapping. Of course, with all of our Navigate reinforcement functions, we can also set shape codes and bar types directly from our template. So let's start to configure the reinforcement. So in this particular pad foundation, we don't require any top bars. So for the bottom bars, you'll notice here that we're using the same setting for the longitudinal and transversal bars. Here, we'll just opt to have a continuous bar. The bar type we'll use is going to be a H20 and the shape code will be shape code 21. In this example, we don't require any hooks at the start and the end and the spacing here will be 250. We'll then go ahead and apply that reinforcement into our foundation. To visualise the reinforcement, we'll select our rebar tab and we'll select show obscured. Again, like all of our other tool sets in Navigate Rebar, all of our dialog boxes are modeless so we can continue to work in the background of Revit. Let's now look at a slightly more complex reinforcement component. So here we'll take a look at a four pole pole cap. So again, we'll select the element first and in our foundation reinforcement dialog, this time we will apply reinforcement to the top layers as well. So in this example, we'll now opt for two L bars. So this is quite a big foundation. So we'll actually set up two L bars instead of one continuous U bar. Because we're now using two bars, we can actually set a lap. So in this case here, I'll set a lap of 50 times diameter. The bar type will be a H20 and the shape code will be shape code 11. Again, for the spacings, we'll set this to 200 and we'll do an identical thing for the bottom reinforcement. So again, I can select two L bars, an overlap or lap of 50 times diameter. The bar type will be H20 and again, we'll use a shape code, which is an L bar, shape code 11. Again, we'll match our spacing in here and we'll select apply to apply that reinforcement bar into our pile cap. Again, we'll use our Navigate Rebar tab and we'll say show obscured so we can actually visualize that reinforcement. So you can now see all of the bars in both of the layers are all nicely lapped and placed out in the pile cap. So what we've now done is looked at some simple isolated foundations. However, you can see here that I have a wall foundation. So this is obviously a different element within Revit, but not a problem. We can still use that with our foundation reinforcement tool. So let's begin by using our name settings. So here you can see that I already have something configured for my shear wall foundation. You'll see here that we're not using the top reinforcement, but I've opted here to use bottom reinforcement and the longitudinal bars are just continual bars. They're H20s, straight bars in here, 250 centers. If I go to the transversal bars, you'll notice here, again, we're using a continuous bar. This is a H20 and we're using a U bar, which is shape code 21. So again, just like you've seen before, we can apply that reinforcement in here. We can then go to our rebar tab and show unobscured to actually visualize that bar. If we want to make any adjustments or further amendments, we can just simply use the shape handles in here to actually make these a little bit cleaner in here. So what we'll do is we'll just move these using my shape handles in here, like so. So one of the really nice things with all of our Navigate rebar functions is that we apply constraints in all areas. So if I select this wall foundation and I select edit type, Let's say that we want to reduce the width to 2000. We can type that in here, click apply, 
and you can now see all of that rebar has adapted to that change. Let's now look at some other use cases for our foundation reinforcement tool. So here we're going to just look at a plain slab. So again we'll select the slab first and in our foundation reinforcement dialog I'm just going to use the name setting for slab reinforcement. So here you'll notice that we're placing out two layers at the top and two layers at the bottom and these are literally just plain straight bars H12s in the top layer, H16s in the bottom layer. If I apply that you can see that that's a really fast and efficient way of actually getting basic reinforcement into something like a floor slab. In this case here you'll notice that the actual element type is a foundation slab but that would have also worked for a normal floor. Why would we want to use this for a floor? Well of course as we've just said we're applying constraints to all of our reinforcement bar so this is much more efficient. Let's also look at another example which is a drop panel. So you can see that we have a column, we have a floor slab here and actually what's happened here is I've cut a hole into my slab and you can see that we've now got this drop panel. So again we can actually use our foundation reinforcement feature. So I'm going to remove the top bars. For the bottom bars here we'll just go ahead and use one single bar. We'll use 16s for this example here. The shape code will be shape code 21. And here I'll just uh, tighten up the spacing, perhaps we'll have 200 centers in here. And again we'll apply that into our drop head. And you can now see on the drop panel we have all of that reinforcement placed out. We'll then say show obscured and you can now see the flexibility of our foundation reinforcement feature. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this session and I'll look forward to seeing you in our next discovery session.